From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, April 7th, 2022. U.S. disrupted Russian botnet. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the government officials disrupted a botnet built by the Sandworm Hacking Group linked to Russia's GRU intelligence agency. Sandworm had previously been blamed for attacks against Ukraine's electrical grid back in 2015 and the NotPetya attacks in 2017. This botnet used Cyclops Blink code to target WatchGuard Technologies Firebox firewall hardware and was also able to infect some Asus network hardware. Garland said the government believed it took down the botnet before it could be weaponized to perform any malicious activity. Twitter shadow bans Russian government accounts. The social network announced that it will drastically reduce the chances of people seeing posts from accounts belonging to the Russian government as part of further measures to limit Russia's ability to leverage the platform. This means these accounts won't be suggested to follow or appear in search or explore pages. In an effort not to spread content that risks violating the Geneva Conventions, Twitter will also require the removal of tweets posted by government or state-affiliated media accounts that contain media showing prisoners of war from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Twitter's head of site integrity, Yoel Roth, said there are exceptions to this policy for media that is compelling to the public interest or newsworthy POW content. Twitter will also remove any content showing POWs with abusive intent across all accounts. DOJ charges Russian national with operating Hydra. We reported yesterday that German police seized the servers of the Hydra dark web market. Now the U.S. Justice Department filed charges against a 30-year-old Russian national named Dmitry Olegovich Pavlov, alleging a range of crimes connecting to operating Hydra. Pavlov ran a company called Prom Service Limited, which offered hosting and administrative services for Hydra. The DOJ claims he collected commissions on sales of illicit goods on Hydra worth millions of dollars. The U.S. Treasury also issued sanctions against Hydra and the Estonia-based crypto exchange Garantex this week in the hopes that it will prevent individuals associated with Hydra from cashing out remaining funds. Axie Infinity hackers move some funds. We've been covering the story of the hack of Axie Infinity's Ronin network bridge, which saw the game lose roughly $600 million worth of crypto assets. Since this occurred on the Ethereum blockchain, the address where the funds went is known. Stealing the funds is one thing, but laundering them is an entirely separate challenge. Funds are starting to trickle out to other exchanges, with analysts observing about $20 million worth of assets moving to exchanges in the Bahamas and Seychelles last week, and this week roughly $12 million of assets flowed into a cryptocurrency mixer to obscure sources. And now a word from our sponsor, Code42. Surprise, surprise. Five years from now, Jamie, who's resigning today, will ring the NASDAQ bell officially launching her company on the public market. And what you'll soon realize is that Jamie stole your most valuable data to start her new company. Learn how Code42 Insider can stop data theft and protect your organization's most valuable assets. Visit Code42.com slash show me to learn more. Google bans data harvesting apps. Security researchers at AppCensus notified Google about an SDK found in Android apps from the company Measurement Systems, which has corporate and web registration ties to a Virginia defense contractor that does intelligence intercept work for national security agencies. The code was found inside several Muslim prayer apps that have been downloaded over 10 million times, as well as a QR code reader and other popular consumer apps. The researchers found that code allowed measurement systems to surreptitiously collect data from users describing it as the most privacy-invasive SDK they had seen in a mobile app. The researchers also sent a copy of their findings to the FTC. Google says it removed apps containing measurement system software from the Google Play Store on March 25th, although some apps were reinstated after they removed the SDK. The SDK stopped collecting data shortly after the researchers went public, but could be reactivated on devices with already installed apps. Threat actors spoof WhatsApp voice message notifications. Security researchers at Armor Blocks outlined this new phishing campaign targeting Office 365 and Google Workspace accounts. This sends spoofed WhatsApp voice message emails sent with a legitimate domain belonging to the Center for Road Safety, an entity in Moscow. The campaign is estimated to have hit over 27,000 inboxes. Phishing emails include a link to play back the new private voicemail in WhatsApp. Once clicked, users are sent to a legitimate Center for Road Safety domain, but it appears the attackers are exploiting a deprecated or at least old version of this parent domain. Once there, the page asks users to verify that they are not a robot, with an allow pop-up leading to the installation of a malicious payload. AMD bug overclocks your CPU. 
AMD confirmed that a bug in its GPU drivers changes the settings of Ryzen CPUs in BIOS without user permission. Some users reported seeing auto-overclock CPUs, and AMD typically warns that overclocking CPUs voids its warranty. The company said it will share more information on the bug soon, but didn't provide any mitigation advice or estimated fix date. The bug seems tied to a Radeon Adrenaline driver from March 17th. The driver suite already added an auto-overclock feature in September 2021, but users are supposed to opt in. Windows 11 adds new security features. As part of a number of updates to the OS, Microsoft added Microsoft Defender Smart Screen, designed to detect if you're entering Microsoft account information into malicious apps or phishing sites in Edge. It's unclear if this only applies to apps from the Microsoft Store or any installed in a system. Another new feature is Smart App Control, which uses AI and code signing to ensure only trusted apps run on a PC. The company also allows customers to now sign into Azure Active Directory and Microsoft accounts with passwordless sign-ons. No word on when these features roll out. If you're all done with cybersecurity headlines and are looking for your next podcast to binge, start with Defense in Depth. This week's episode is all about training for a cyber disaster. They break down what needs to be done for organizations to prepare for its next cyber disaster. It's inevitably going to happen, so how do you train and plan to make it through as smooth as possible? If you don't know how your organization is prepared, you definitely need to check the episode out. Find it over at CISOseries.com or in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.